So, hi, uh, my name is pronounced Christina Lanemetz, and you probably have already seen it uh, in your email uh, inbox. Uh, so I'm uh, introducing the phenotyping uh, uh, landscape in Estonia. Uh, and uh, I'm actually from Estonian Crop Research Institute, but I used to be part of uh, a signal research group in the University of Tartu. So I have a little bit of background in both basic and applied science, uh, and uh, I can see the benefit of uh, these phenotyping networks uh, for certain. So I will be uh, talking a little bit about all of them, as Estonia currently has no real phenotype, plant phenotyping network. Uh, but these are the groups that are doing similar things and could uh, benefit from these technologies. Uh, to simplify this uh, large list a little bit, uh, I have uh, set it up as uh, groups. Uh, first, uh, there, there are two, that, two institutions that are working with uh, plant breeding. Then there are three that are working with outdoor experiments and uh, three that are working more with uh, indoor experiments and uh, phenotyping very specific traits uh, in the laboratory. Of course, some groups are involved in several things, uh, but uh, then I will mention it. So uh, first, the plant breeding institutions. First is the place where I work. Uh, in Estonian Crop Research Institute, uh, we are breeding many very different uh, crops. As you can see, the list is very uh, uh, diverse, from cereals to vegetables. And uh, for all plant breeding, it is necessary to phenotype uh, hundreds or even thousands or even tens of thousands of uh, individual genotypes. So it's very different from uh, trying to see uh, the difference between uh, one trait of one genotype and another genotype. It's dozens of uh, traits uh, for thousands of genotypes. Uh, the um, main strength <coughs> is our field experiments. And here is an aerial photo where you can see uh, the different uh, trial plots for plant breeding of uh, uh, crop uh, uh, species. And here are about 40,000 trial plots in 45 hectares. And uh, this crop breeding has been successful. These uh, are the 16 varieties uh, from the last seven years. And uh, it's uh, very diverse from cereals to, uh, to vegetables to forages. Uh, to aid in uh, plant breeding, we also have the capability of uh, chromatography, soil biology, and biotechnology, uh, which we use gladly. And I'm from the biotechnology department. And uh, since uh, when doing practical breeding, it's also important to get the right product in the end. Then we also do quality testing uh, because uh, these uh, traits like how well does it rise or uh, what color is the crisp, it really depends on the genotype and it's imp important to determine which of the genotypes are better than others. And uh, for the large list of uh, different groups and uh, species that we are working on, if you want to contact anybody and you don't know who in our institute is working with it, then feel free to write to me and I will send you the right contact or I will be also happy to work with you myself. Uh, the other uh, plant breeding institution in Estonia is uh, Bolli Horticultural Research Center, which is part of Estonian <laughs> University of Life Sciences. Uh, when we are doing uh, crops and vegetables, then they are doing uh, uh, berries and fruits. Uh, and uh, in the, uh, since 2009, they have also released quite many different varieties, I think 35, uh, here. And uh, here you can also see the numbers that, that uh, to uh, really breed a plant, like they, they really need to scan through very many different genotypes. Uh, for their research, they also have tools for uh, enhancing this. Uh, they have the FTIR method, 
uh, for measuring sugar, acids, and alcohol, uh, and they have uh, also high performance liquid chromatography uh, for measuring vitamins, polyphenols, and anthocyanins. And for example, this uh, method has been used on black current uh, to measure the bioactive compounds because uh, it is also a genetic uh, which of the varieties or which genotypes uh, are uh, possibly better for health. So now I will tell you about three groups that are doing more uh, outdoor experiments uh, and uh, also climate change experiments. Uh, one group, ULOS group, could probably be also here, but there, not, right now I grouped it in the next group. I will talk, talk about it a bit later. So the first of these is uh, uh, Tartu Observatory and their vegetation remote sensing group. And uh, they are uh, using proximal and remote sensing techniques uh, to estimate uh, plant traits at uh, different levels. Uh, at uh, a, a tree canopy level, understory level, and also at the single leaf level in the lab. There should also be a poster about it, so uh, uh, make sure to find it. And they also have infrastructure for ground reference. So uh, the second group in this, uh, among these is uh, the plant ecophysiology group in the University of uh, Tartu. And uh, they are doing experiments with uh, uh, increased humidity uh, outdoors. They have a system as you can see it here, uh, which is called free air humidity manipulation facility. And uh, with this, they uh, add uh, water vapor uh, to the area, and then they uh, measure how the trees around this uh, are affected by the increased humidity. They also do experiments uh, in climate chambers because this sometimes enables better control over the experiment. And they also do experiments with uh, natural forests and uh, they can measure different rates uh, like gas exchange, stomatal conduction, sap flow and so on. In, uh, at different uh, canopy levels uh, they have built these towers for this. Uh, the second uh, group uh, here is uh, landscape or third <laughs> landscape ecology and ecotechnology research group uh, with uh, Ulo Mander leading it, and uh, they are flooding soil uh, to see how this affects uh, uh, the carbon and nitrogen cycle, and uh, they have different uh, machinery for this. As for the groups working with specific traits in a laboratory setting, like the, there is uh, Hannes Kollis group, uh, a plant signal research group. This is the group that I used to be part of. Uh, they are measuring uh, plant gas exchange and uh, stomachal responses. And uh, for this, you probably already heard uh, Hannes' talk yesterday. Uh, plants. Uh, uh, water is evaporating uh, from the plants through stomata and this water vapor can be measured and the chamber as you saw looks like this and uh, this is uh, uh, an Arabidopsis plant and uh, they have the system for uh, eight plants side by side and they can uh, change different uh, uh, trade like different uh, things inside the chamber, for example, different light or different uh, CO2 concentration, ozone concentration, humidity, uh, and then they can see how different uh, genotypes uh, are affected by this change. But, and they also have a system for larger plants and crop plants can be measured here. Ah, and the good thing about it is that uh, this machine measures it uh, uh, in time. 
so that uh, the time points quite frequently and the uh, response can be seen in real time. So now I will talk a little bit about Ulo Ninevets group uh, from University, Estonian University of Life Sciences. Uh, they are working uh, with uh, global change re research uh, and uh, they have a system uh, indoors for measuring uh, the biogenic volatile organic uh, uh, compounds uh, which are emitted by plants. Like if this system looks a bit similar, then some of the people who were involved in building the system in Collis lab were also involved with building this system here. But uh, as in Hannes Collis lab, uh, the trait that is uh, measured is water vapor. Uh, in Ulon Inemes lab, it's more the organic compounds. And this can be then analyzed using this PTR, uh, like proton transfer reaction time of flight mass spectrometer and uh, gas uh, uh, chromatography mass uh, spectrometer. <laughs> but uh, as I said, this group could also uh, be seen more as an outdoor group because they do also a lot of outdoor experiments and they uh, do experiments with different uh, species and uh, they have a capability to do very many different things from uh, plant genetics uh, to uh, uh, phenotyping uh, under the micros microscope. And then uh, Erki Truves group is uh, their strength is microscopical phenotyping. Right. For example, uh, they were uh, studying Arabidopsis myosin uh, uh, phenotype and uh, the bending uh, of uh, young plantlets and uh, how it affected the ameloplast the distribution in endothermal cells. So uh, as for Estonia, the take home message is that uh, in Estonia currently, we don't have plant phenotyping uh, network. However, uh, this certainly, definitely would benefit many groups in Estonia. And uh, there have been uh, funding applications uh, for joint research between applied and uh, basic research groups. Uh, however, these have not yet been successful. And, uh, and it is certain that uh, uh, stronger uh, collaboration and uh, joint funding uh, would help advance both basic and applied science in Estonia. Thank you.